Underwood. Thin ice! <laughs> To smoke some weed and shut up. My God. Oh, that's not for sure. There it is. Boom! Yes! Hold on. Episode one. I can't find it on Facebook. Episode one. Okay, nobody cares if I share it anyway. One episode. One seventy four. All right, what a start. Facebook is uh, weird. Like if it's not the time of the show, then it gives you. It won't let you share it or something. I don't know. I think what you're trying to say is that Facebook sucks. All right, episode one seventy four. Pretty much, yeah. Sunday, November fifth, twenty twenty three, a Christmas Eve for lots of uh, folks out there. As the college basketball season begins tomorrow evening, kicking or actually it begins tomorrow morning. I should say it's we're kicking it off with a. Uh, Terrific marquee matchup uh, between uh, – uh, hold on. I'm going to need everybody to hold on for a minute here. Uh, kicking it off between Spalding and IUPUI, 10 a.m. tomorrow on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, tickets as low as 23 bucks. That can't be right. Who the hell is paying 23 bucks? <laughs> <for that? laughs> yeah, because it says tickets as low as $2 for the Illini yeah. game. So Yeah. Uh, there you go. Uh, Illinois – Playing Eastern Illinois to open up the season's second year in a row with this being the case, I believe, because that was the opener last year. Correct. Um, probably a lot of the same in this game. I mean, we'll see. Uh, but we should probably start the preview with that now. Um, you know, Monday, November 6th, 7 p.m. Central Standard, Big Ten Network. Illinois is a 27 and a half point favorite. Last time I looked, is it on uh, Big Ten Network or is it, it on is, BTN yeah. Plus? It is on, well, first of all, it's Big Ten Plus, not BTN Plus. Jesus, get it right. Uh, second of all, Big Ten Plus is Oakland on Friday and then a couple others. There's three of them it's Oakland and then Valpo and uh, either Western or Southern. So, I think Southern sounds right. Yeah. So, there you go. Steve, what's going on? Big Ten Plus game to uh, open the season. Uh, or Big Ten game. No, Big Ten Network. Jesus, I can't even. Uh, go, go ahead. Big Ten Network Plus to open up the season. Uh, yeah, Illinois beat Eastern. Can we, can we restart? Uh, 57 last year. Take two. Yeah. Uh, all right. Episode one. Set, no, I'm just kidding. Just uh, Steve, everybody's thrown off by daylight savings anyways. Feels like it's 10 o'clock at night, so. Yeah, must be why we have zero viewers right now, except yeah. for Steve. Uh, 87-57 win for the Illini last season. They won by 30. Uh, some notable non-conference games for Eastern this year. You'll remember last year, Eastern Illinois uh, beat Iowa. Beat Iowa, yeah. Yeah, in December, I believe that was. Uh, but this year, I get the sense that they probably won't win any of these non-conference games against power conference opponents, except maybe you know Loyola Chicago is not a power conference opponent, but it is a notable opponent for them given the rest of their yeah. schedule. They play uh, Loyola Chicago on Saturday of next week. Um, they play at Kansas on November 28th. have to imagine that's going to be a, uh, a tough one for this squad. And then uh, December 21st, they take on Iowa State. Uh, Eastern Illinois last season ended up uh, finishing with, uh, let's see here. Hold on, didn't have it pulled up. Uh, 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 Struggling. Nine, yeah. Not yet, yeah, not good. Nine and 22 last season for Eastern Illinois. Um, they had the 13th worst offense in America. And... Uh, a 304th ranked defense in terms of efficiency. So one area this team struggled, and this might make Illinois feel good. They were uh, the eighth worst free throw shooting team in the country. <laughs> so there you go. It's pretty good. Was Illinois worse than that or better than that? That is one of the better questions you could have asked. Uh, they were better than that. Illinois was 309th, so Whew. about 40 spots better. So. Take good that. Stuff. Good stuff. Uh, but yeah, they were three and nine going into their Iowa game last year that they lost. So who knows? Um, we'll see. But uh, let's look at Eastern Illinois lineup. Uh, projected starters. I don't know why, but starts. What the hell what is an that? Idiot. Jeez. Jesus. I, it doesn't even need to be there. I just. <laughs> anyway, uh, this lineup has a lot of new faces. Mm hmm. 
Uh, they got projected starters. This is from the official Eastern Illinois game notes uh, PDF that I pulled up. So looks like they'll have Did three you guys. Their system? Anybody could find this. Uh, three guys in the lineup that weren't there last year. Uh, projected starting at the one, Tiger Booker. 5'10", 190, transfer from Tarleton. Averaged 6.6 .6 points per game last year. Actually, Bart Torvik has uh, – him as their projected leading scorer for the season. So we'll see if uh, this really? translates. Yeah, I don't uh, – maybe he was highly regarded and just didn't play enough last year. Who knows? What do I know? Uh, who cares? Uh, Isaiah Gr – Jesus, get out of here. Uh, talking about the chat. Uh, Isaiah Griffin, six foot 160 freshman from Orange, New Jersey. Um, Nakiel Shelton, I guess is how this name is pronounced. Nakiel, Nakiel, uh, 6'3", 200, guard – uh, the fifth leading scorer in junior college basketball last season averaged 23.6 points per game. Uh, they have Quincy Malone starting at the four, six, eight, two, ten, averaged six points, seven, uh, six point seven points, five rebounds last season. And of course, old friend Jermaine Hamlin, six, ten, two, thirty five. Like this, you know, good size matchup for Coleman Hawkins. We'll see how that goes for Jermaine. Uh, uh, three points. Two rebounds per game last season. Somehow, still a starter, even though he barely plays. I guess they just <laughs> need somebody to throw at the five to start the game. I don't know. That's true. You think that's why? I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know. You named your cat Jesus. Moving along. Um, uh, <laughs> six really off the rails today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's three viewers. I can't. I, if there's no audience to perform in front of, but how do I perform? Uh, six players returned from their team last season, two of which are projected starters, like I said. So Malone and Hamlin still there from last season. I wonder about the size matchup in this game. I think Illinois has a an extreme advantage. Yeah, I mean, we're so, talking yeah. Ty Rogers probably guarding Tiger Booker. This will be a good test for whether he guards Booker or Griffin. It'll be a good yeah. test. Those are smaller guards. We'll see how Ty does in that matchup. I think that's going to be a perfect spot for Sincere Harris if he comes in and uh, plays against those guys. And then you have like Damask can match up with, with one of those guys. I think you'll probably see Shannon guard one of the smaller guards. Damask probably guard Shelton, uh, Gary on Malone, and then obviously the uh, the huge, you know, season-changing, groundbreaking matchup between Hamlin and Hawkins who probably went up against each other in practice when uh, when Coleman was a, a freshman and sophomore. Yeah. Um, Brad said that uh, it sounds like Shelton likes to play inside a lot, so it be interesting to see him try to go inside. But um, Jay says Illinois is a 26.5-point favorite. It was 26.5, then it was 27.5. Is it back to 26.5? moving. I don't know. Guy's trying to fact check me. I'll fact check you right back. <laughs> Uh, Brad said that uh, Coach Marty Simmons is one of the best offensive coaches. Why? Why did it go to twenty? Country? Why what? did it go to twenty six and a half? It was just twenty seven and a half. Why did it change somebody, three times? Somebody threw a big bet now. Nobody should be betting this game. If you're betting this game, you're a degenerate. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, Marty Simmons. Uh, I think people look at that quote and probably think, well, "What are we doing here?" But if anybody knows who's a good coach and who's not a good coach, it's other coaches. So. Yeah, uh, I don't think this is just something you say, even though I think a lot of what Brad yeah. says is something you say. But I wrote here, it's tough to produce with the personnel you have at Eastern. And he had four offenses inside the top 120 of efficiency while he was at Evansville. Evansville is a bad basketball program. They were 52nd in the country and adjusted offense one of the years he was there. So Yeah, I mean, Brad kind of stub stumbled into the maybe in the country part. He does uh, that with every so single no, thing he says. But, so. Yeah, so uh, Brad's excited to play this offense apparently to, to see how good his defense is um i don't think that's going to determine anything brad but whatever i was looking up marty's last name because i had no idea i did see that they hired rich mcbride uh as an uh, assistant over the summer uh he's a local legend from around here we're just south of where he played some high school ball uh i guess he was back in lanfear as an assistant a few years ago and he's kind of been uh going to different colleges and now he is with Eastern. So he's on the up and up. He is. Uh, Brad did have a press conference today. Uh, had, a, I got a few things here from, you know, that. before, before we get to that, sure, uh, go ahead. uh, it's interesting that a lot of the players 
from the tw- to the two thousands era of Illini basketball have gone into coaching. coaching I think that's, yeah. there's a lot of them. You know, D Brown, our good friend, mm-hmm. uh, former friend of the program, um, Rich McBride, uh, 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 Roger Powell, Roger Powell, um, Brian Randall. Uh, I think that might be it. I don't know where Brian Randall is at now. He might be in Detroit, but either way, it, it is interesting to uh, to see that. I think that is true. Yeah. Something to look at. Yeah, he's in Detroit now. He, uh, yeah, he's in Minnesota, then Phoenix, then Detroit. So there you go. A lot of coaches. All really right, let's lost. let's. I mean, this is this is this is. Okay, uh, Brad had a press conference apparently, so this this will be good. Yeah, this was today, a uh, couple hours ago, actually. Um, <clears throat> he said that he's really been impressed with the, this team's attention to detail. I think we talked about that a little bit. Um, how the practices they've only had like half of a bad practice. Well, that's uh, now ninety percent of the practices have been good. So, uh, <laughs> well, if it's just because it's not good doesn't mean it's bad, right? You know? Right, right. Um, he said the biggest takeaway from the Kansas scrimmage was when Kansas ran uh, four and five way switching. He said last year when teams did that against them, it was a problem. Um, it led Illinois um, playing around the three point line, never penetrating, never diving, never creasing it. Um, and this team actually does that, and they went to the free throw line 25, 26 times against Kansas's five way switching. So he's pretty, pretty excited about that takeaway from the Kansas game and the fact that Illinois closed out the game. Um, those are games that Kansas won a lot last year. Uh, Kansas was one closing them out, Illinois wasn't very good at it. And uh, Brad said that was nice to see. Um, he once again got asked about the point guard position, and he said, quote, I think the primary ball handler stuff is so overrated. Uh, he said he watched the Nuggets game, and uh, uh, what's his face brought up the ball every time. What's his Jokic. name? Jokic, thank you. Um, he said, we get the ball off <clears throat> the defensive rebounds, and we have multiple pushers. It's more impactful when we run sets. Ty's a really good ball handler and really good decision maker. So he said, shut up, stop asking, basically. I think that's a pretty insane thing to say before the season starts. What? You can't compare the NBA to the NFL. I'm just kidding. You can't compare (laughs) the NBA to college basketball. He was just saying that he doesn't think that teams need a primary ball handler. I mean, I... Because you want to know why he thinks that? Because this team doesn't have one. (laughs) Yeah, I think it's a little different now than it used to be. I think it used to be way more important. Yeah. Especially when teams were running a ton of sets. Um, I don't really think that's as much the case anymore. But, I mean, there is an argument to make that did UConn really have a primary ball handler last year? I'm not sure. I also think that team was just super talented. Yeah. Um, Because Andre Jackson had the ball a lot, and he, Moline, had a little bit. Uh, and then uh, Tristan Newton as well, but uh, most most of the recent national champions have had a a good point guard, so I think it matters for some, maybe not as much. I don't know. I just I just don't know why we're talking about it before the season starts. Because uh, they didn't have anything else to ask. Don't mind my monitor; it's just like falling. So <laughs> uh, yeah, there you got, go. Got problems, folks. Got problems. Anyway, uh, preseason Ken Palm. Metrics, uh, adjusted offensive efficiency, Illinois is 18th. Eastern Illinois is 250th. Not that any of this matters. It's all projection, of course. Adjusted defensive efficiency, Illinois 21st. Eastern Illinois 291st. So Eastern definitely has a better offense than they do defense. However, I don't think – I don't understand why Brad is saying uh, he wants to see how good his defense is facing an offense like this, whatever. Um, I don't, I don't, I, I guess the first, the real first test for this defense is Marquette. So. Yeah, that sounds right. There you go. Uh, predictions for the lineup. I think we both think it's going to be the same that we saw in the Kansas exhibition. Yeah, yeah I think this uh, is probably going to be the lineup going forward. Uh, Here's a like question for you. Length. Who comes off the bench first between Sincere and Justin Harmon? Uh, Harmon. I'm going to say Sincere. Yeah, I, so I, this game might be a little bit different. I think we're going to see a lot of, like, Sincere. We're going to see a lot of um, Reddy, a lot of a lot more of Danger than we saw uh, in the Kansas exhibition. I don't agree with that. 
I'm just telling you, I mm-hmm. bet we will. So I, I think, yeah, well, obviously more than we saw. Yeah. Cause it's going to, you know, garbage time is a thing in games like these, but I, I do think it'll be interesting to see how the rotation looks early. Um, I don't think we're going to see a lot of it in terms of, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, actual impact on the defensive end takeaway wise. Like I don't think we're gonna have a lot to take away from this game, no matter how they play defensively. I think if they give up like 40 points, it'd be like, okay, if they give up less than 50 points, I think that's when you're like, okay, not, not I mean, personnel is personnel, but yeah, I, I tend to think that this team is going to be better in just about every phase. And I think that's just where the age comes into play. Like the reason the attention to detail is so much better than last year is because you have a bunch of 23 year olds or older playing. Right. It's just, that's, I could, I could, I could figure out how to say that quote in a press conference. Come on, Brad. (laughs) Jesus. Uh, Nathan, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate the kind words. Uh, Make sure you don't put Ethan in any of that stuff. Uh, Fly the Dub says we should see a lot of the young guys playing tomorrow night. That's a benefit of these types of games early. Yeah, we're going to – that's – I see that happening. We'll get we'll get into that, Ethan but uh, we'll get but, into more of that. But Illinois is the biggest favorite in the Big Ten in opening games for that the ones that have spreads by yeah. far. So they're clearly playing the worst opponent pretty much. Uh, Steve says if we if they move the ball well, which I think it is the key to the season, point guard is not needed. Yeah, they. I don't think the point guard matters as much um, for this team as people are making it out to be. You are going to regret saying that. But anyway, uh, Phil, Phil says, like to see Dane and Dre start this game. Why? Because what really kind of what does that help say? them? Unpredictable you, you don't need an unpredictable lineup against Eastern Illinois. Come on, I, I'd like to see them play, but do you really need unpredict? Like, do you need to be like, oh, watch what we're about to do to Eastern Illinois? Let's just throw DGL at the point. That'll throw them off. That's not going to do anything. Yeah. But thanks for checking in. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> That's how you players- lose six viewers real quick. Good work. <laughs> yeah, just you know. <laughs> I just I don't think that they need an unpredictable lineup against Eastern Illinois. I don't know. I just that's I feel like that's overthinking it. You don't need them to start. Let them yeah, play I don't think the it, last ten minutes of the game. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think. And Dane and Dre, really it, it would m- more be like Amani and Dre, not Dane and Dre, because Dane Danger doesn't need to. Dane started games last year, yeah. and these types of games are the ones where he feasted. Uh, players to watch, players to watch. Uh, on the Illini side, I'm going with Marcus Damask. I think we're going to be on triple-double watching some of these types of games with him. I think uh, rebounds might be an issue, but I, I could see, you know, I think a good night from Damask tomorrow exactly. will be, you know, 14 points, seven assists, six rebounds, something like that. Uh, I think him and Hawkins both will be filling up the uh, stat sheet in games like these. So watch out for Damask and his official Illini debut. Uh, who's your pick on the Illini side? Uh, I pick Dane Danger because, like I said, I think we're going to see a lot of Dane. Um, Dane really didn't get uh, much time or valuable time in the Kansas exhibition, and I think that he's going to need that for Illinois to move forward successfully. I mean, I think Dane's going to have to play minutes. So, Is he, though? Yes, he is. Is he? Yeah, because remember how many fouls Coleman ha- Hawkins had in that exhibition game? That's where Quincy at the five comes into play. Okay. Uh, Phil says he was guarding Dickinson. Are very helpful to a season's long goal. No, no, they're not. But I agree to disagree. <laughs> agree to disagree. What? Are we not allowed to disagree in the society? Uh. It was a degree to disagree. It wasn't a don't ever watch again. Phil, I enjoy the comments. Phil loves Dane and hopes to see a lot from him too. I we agree. do too. But also, Hansberry hopefully is better. Uh, anyway, I just think there's no use for us. Sl- whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, my player to watch for Eastern is uh, Nakiel Shelton. Not Nakiel Shelton. Uh, <laughs> mainly just because he's a Juco guy. I think there's a lot of Juco players that score a lot of points and like are sneaky good when they get to the next level. Maybe he could be that guy or that type of guy. Like there's a lot of examples of this where, Hey, if you're averaging 20 plus in Juco, you come over, you might surprise some people. You might put up numbers here. Be curious to see how that translates 
in the entire season, but also in this game when he's probably going to be guarded <laughs> by uh, – Marcus Damascus, Terrence Shannon to start the game. Probably yeah, Shannon. I think that he's put up 20 plus in the couple exhibition games they've had too. That would have been my pick, but you already picked him. Um, so I don't want Jermaine Hamlin because why not? I'd like to see him get, you know, three points, two rebounds. Jesus. Uh, what? Yeah, but- you already picked the guy that I would have picked. You should have picked the dude that has the sa- has a combined name between Tiger hey, Woods and Devin Booker. Hey, maybe maybe Phil Traeger is my uh, alt account. Look at this. There, there you go. The same page. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> uh, do you think they go? They come out and they go Shannon on Shelton, Damask on Griffin. I would assume that's probably what they do. Uh, yeah. I, I just feel like you want to throw. I mean, I assume that they think Shannon is their best defender to guard that type of position, right? I mean, I don't think it's going to be Rodgers. Right. Yeah, I don't. I think that would have to be Shannon, right? Yeah. Uh, let me look up. Sense with that lineup. Let me look up. Uh, I want to see the stats for Hamlin and uh, Hamlin last year in this game had six points, one rebound. Sincere Malone had three points on one of seven shooting, five rebounds and assist. So, uh, by the way, um, Eastern in that game scored 57 points. They were uh, 21 of 60 from the field, 20% from three. Illinois was 54% from the free throw line in that game, uh, 34% from three. And then uh, overall 34, quick math, quick math, quick math, 54, nope. 64. Nope. 54. Nope. 64. 30 for 64. <laughs> the same number four times in a row. Had to get it down. Had to think about it for a second. Um, so there you go. Yeah. Uh, predictions. Here we go. Predictions. Big stuff here. Big stuff. Uh, Phil, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, go ahead and hit that. Ethan's trying to get us to 500. And the only way for him to do it is going to be him to sit out and play basketball for 18 hours straight. So it's not going to work at this stage. Uh, <laughs> we do nothing but lose subscribers when I say something about it. If you guys could uh, smash that subscribe button, as you know, the young kids say. Um, predictions. Uh, I told you I, Illinois was winning by 50, I think. Um, but I didn't predict that. I got Illinois winning 102 to 58. What's that? 40s something? No banner for this? 44. I didn't make any banners. I for, it completely forgot. It's a, we're, I'm not used to it. We're back. I forgot. I forgot. I'm sorry. Hold on. I'll wait it. for you to put it on screen. I got you. <laughs> uh, Phil says, lucky to get 40 this game. We were that good on D. I think that's maybe too bold of a statement, but I also think that garbage time points will be a factor. Yeah, I... I agree. I also you, regret it up kind of big. I think it gets harder to. I also regret giving Eastern 64. I might change that. But right now, Illinois 96, Eastern 64. If I had to do anything, I would probably say 106, 54. Go well, plus 10, Illinois, 15. minus 10, Eastern. But uh, yeah, this so should if be... you don't live in Illinois, bet Illinois. This should be uh, an easy win, if we're being honest. Yeah. It should. Ooh, Jalen Hurts goes down. Not good for the Eagles. Anyway, uh, 30 – what do I have there? Is that 32? 32.1? Yeah. 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 Uh, Jeff says, did you watch the Underwood interview on last year's team and this year's team? Uh, I don't know. Depends on what we're referencing here. <laughs> I mean, I think I, – I I'm not really sure. Alrighty then. Shout start. out to uh, Illinois football and uh, Mr. Paddock. Paddock? Paddock? How do you say yeah, that? Yeah, he looked uh, – it's got to be Paddock. He looked He looked horrific when he came in against Penn State and then comes out yesterday and looked like Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah. So maybe there's a – is there a QB controversy in Champaign? I don't think so. Where do you think Champaign ranks in terms of big – On YouTube. Cities? I'll look it up, Jeffrey. I don't know. Where do I think what? Where do you think Champagne ranks in Big Ten cities? Probably, I would say. I don't know. I have I haven't been to any of them. Just on the surface, you know, I would say probably one of the worst. But whatever. I would I would put it down 
towards the bottom. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what, what are we talking about here? Piscataway, New Jersey. I mean, that's just that's good stuff. Uh, anyway, just that I know a lot of people that think that Champagne's one of the three worst, which I think is probably fair. I'd, I put it in the bottom fourth. I know. I think Columbus is great. That's one that I've been to. Columbus is great. Uh, yeah. West Lafayette is pretty shitty, but also, you know, what can you do? We should discuss this for the next hour. Uh, okay. <laughs> Opening night around the Big Ten. Uh, most of the teams playing Monday. A few of them are playing on Tuesday. Uh, Purdue opens up against Samford tomorrow night. They're 19 and a half point favorite. Michigan State opens up against James Madison tomorrow night. 16 and a half point favorite. Uh, Arkansas State plays Wisconsin. Wisconsin minus 14 and a half. That's Monday. Uh, Ohio State plays Oakland, who Illinois plays Friday, minus 19 and a half, Ohio State. Uh, Northwestern plays Binghamton tomorrow. They're minus 19 and a half. Rutgers, this will be an interesting game. Rutgers only six and a half point favorites against Princeton. Obviously, Princeton, a team that went to the Sweet 16 last year. Uh, they lost some players, though, naturally. Uh, Penn State plays Delaware State tomorrow, 18 and a half point favorite for the Nittany Lions. Nebraska plays Lindenwood on Monday, a team that Illinois played last season. Uh, Minnesota plays Bethune Cookman on Monday, minus 17 and a half. And Minnesota is almost a 20 point favorite against you. You are in trouble. I think Illinois played Bethune Cookman last year, the year before. I don't remember which of the two. Hey, last year, but that seems right. Yeah, yeah, I think they did. Uh, Maryland plays Tuesday against Mount St. Mary's. Uh, Indiana opens up against Gol- uh, Florida Gulf Coast on Tuesday. Shout out to uh, uh, assistant coach Kyle Griffin at Florida Gulf Coast, uh, Twitter friend of mine, of course. Uh, Michigan plays UNC Asheville Tuesday, minus 11 and a half for the, uh, the Wolverines. And there's your opening in the big 10. I think if any team in the big 10 loses throughout the year, it's going to be Rutgers, but I don't think that happens. So big 10 will be undefeated through one <clears throat> game for each team. Yeah. Uh, and Brout says, I have said multiple times how bad is our backup when the quarterback was real bad. It's fair. He came. He came to Illinois just to say that he played there because his grandpa played and his dad or something. I don't know. Uh, Bergie says that uh, Champagne's better since they moved the U of I farm. I assume is what he's talking about. Uh, Jeffrey says I only worry about Brad being stubborn this year and not being more flexible with the lineup. Uh, <clears throat> I. I don't know. I don't, if I'm stubborn. not concerned I don't th- about that. Yeah, I don't think he has the guys that you know, like last year where he, you know, bunch of played, losers yeah. played guys more than he probably should have. I don't think he has those guys. Um, I know that people are trying to start things where Drake Gibbs Lawhorn's already mad and uh, stuff like that, but I don't think that's actually happening right now. So, which is good. Um. I was going to say something else, but I forgot what it was. Oh, Jeff, what's how, what, what do I search on YouTube to find that? That's what I was going to ask. Sorry. Go ahead. Watch party tomorrow night. Watch party. Uh, seven o'clock tip, I think, right? Yeah. Yep. We did one last year for this game, which was good, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find it here just to see. Make sure that we did. Um, we did, right? Yeah, we had to. Yeah, we did. We definitely did. Which, uh, you know, hey, watch parties are, are going to be good this year, I think. Uh, dare I say the best season of them, even though we are uh, butchering our format for the Missouri game. That's all right. <laughs> um well, I'm just I'm just glad that we got the mic situation figured out, so you don't have to Very spend true. the whole first My half God. of this game. That's why we do an exhibition. Microphones. That's why we do an <laughs> exhibition right there. That is why. Uh, yeah, November seventh, twenty twenty two, Eastern played Illinois. So pretty much the same thing, except November sixth this year. Um, let me see something here. Wow. How many of those are going to pop up? We had a different look back then. Couple of clowns. Couple of clowns. <laughs> Camera looks weird as hell. That'll be fixed. That kind of looks similar. There you go. How about that? There's the beautiful Riviera Country Club. 
and we move on. Uh, we'll also be doing Friday, right? Are we still doing that? I yeah, I, that's fine. I don't Friday, know. November. 10th. I don't have anything going on right now, so sure. Big Ten Plus game tentatively scheduled seven o'clock Friday night against Oakland. Ninety nine percent chance. I'll say it right now. Ninety nine percent chance. Ninety nine. That sounds good. And the chances of tomorrow's watch party are a hundred percent, or ninety nine point nine, whichever. <laughs> um, we'll see. Hundred point one percent. Sure, why not? Uh, so yeah, I mean, we'll see how it goes, right? Yeah, I I mean, Illinois should roll through the these first few games, uh, but we're back. It actually matters now. It's not Kansas not caring and didn't really show up, you know. And uh, just after the uh, the 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 Illinois game tomorrow, I will be on playback for the Kansas State USC game. Nine o'clock tip for that. I'll probably be on stage on playback nine forty five or ten o'clock central. We put that in the chat here. Yeah, come by there. Shidewinder usually stops by. He's the only guy that watches us on playback. So. <laughs> Good point. Uh, but, yeah, that <clears throat> playback, basically, you can watch the game when we watch the game on the TV or interwebs or whatever. Anyways. Yeah, that is uh, that is the deal. Yeah, as yeah. you can see right here, uh, we got uh, Hall of Fame Series, USC, K-State, and then Tuesday night, uh, Auburn and number 20, Baylor. Um, I don't think I'll be on there Wednesday night, but I uh, might try to do something Thursday as well. So you can subscribe, check that out. Uh, right now, 31 members. I'd like to get that one up, that number up um, on there. But should be fun, you know. Had some good moments on there last year, uh, some good games. Usually it's the best when it's during conference tournaments and stuff, but I think the regular season will be good, especially with some of the early season matchups that don't stink, which I think it takes a little bit for the season to get revved up. Which sucks, but I guess that's just the way it has to be. Yeah. I, I mean, back though. I'm so excited. Some of the charity exhibitions are the best games that we'll see for a little bit, probably. Uh, Jeff, I still say we take the Big Ten title outright. It's a possibility. It is definitely a possibility. Uh, M. Brock says he's late. What's the spread? 20. It's been bouncing from 26 and a half to 27 and a half. So it depends on what book you're looking at. Let's just go with an even 27. How's that sound? That sounds great. Um, I will say we are going to be missing out on some good stuff Friday night during the Illini game since uh, Arizona plays Duke. So uh, You got more than one TV, right? Yeah, but that would be a great playback game is what I'm saying. Oh. It starts an hour before, so maybe I could do the first hour on there. But who knows? We'll see. Uh, you also get Tennessee, Wisconsin. It's a Peacock game. Texas A and M, Ohio State. So you get your first taste of uh, you get your first taste of uh, some Peacock basketball on Friday night with uh, a doubleheader: Texas A and M, Ohio State, and Tennessee, Wisconsin. Good stuff there. Um, yeah, there's a lot of bad non-conference days in November before Feast Week, so be prepared for that. Uh, but we do have some. Really, really good games to start the year, which is kind of always the case. But I feel like it just there's some there's so many days where there's nothing, which I yeah. think hurts. Yeah. So you get that with basketball, though. You know, you can't have just all just awesome games all the time. Yeah, you can. Okay. Maybe all we'll right. try that. Um, all right. Uh, once again, we'd like to shout out uh, Alamo Steakhouse and Saloon, 700 Broadway Avenue in Mattoon, Illinois. You can find them online at www.alamo-steakhouse.com. Um, their new November specials are out. Uh, their featured items are a chili cheeseburger for $15 and a pumpkin creme brulee dessert for $9. Um, tonight, if you haven't eaten, go get a prime rib. Glass of wine, 26 bucks, And uh, I think they're closed on Monday. So we'll tell you about the specials on the next episode. Uh on Tuesday, I assume we're gonna be back Tuesday, right? Tuesday or Wednesday, yeah. I don't really care either way, but uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, if you'd like to reach out and be a sponsor, uh, hit us up on Twitter. Uh, you can email us at Illini Basketball Podcast at gmail.com. Um, and as always, like, subscribe, get us to 500 on YouTube if you can. Um, and we appreciate y'all. So we will be back tomorrow with a little watch party. 
I also want to say, if you didn't see the college basketball season preview on Friday, it's up on the podcast thing. I tweeted out if you could check the Twitter. I think I retweeted on the Illini account as well. Um, uh, you have Tennessee winning the national championship, apparently. Yes. Right? Yeah. I, of course, uh, think the Big Ten is back in a big way. So give me Purdue to win the national championship. My final four is Purdue, Duke, Alabama, and Arizona, I believe. And I believe yours is Purdue, Duke. Did you have Purdue? Yeah. Purdue, Purdue Duke, Duke, Creighton. Tennessee, Creighton. Okay. Is Creighton right? Yeah, Creighton. Jesus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have Alabama. I mean, that's maybe off the board there, but hey. There you yeah. go. Embrots, I think they'll definitely cover the spread. Jeffrey, I'm looking uh, to find that. I'd... Take Illinois minus 26 and a half unless you live in Illinois. <laughs> I can't so. bet them. So. There you go. All right, guys. Yeah, we'll be back uh, after the game Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, obviously, watch party stuff. We'll hang around probably for a little bit after the game before going over to playback. But uh, see everybody then for episode 175. We see you for the watch party first, uh, 650 probably or so live. So yeah. we'll see everybody tomorrow night. See ya.